What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too, as it all massively helps out our channel, and it truly, truly does. And we did have some new members and some upgrades and stuff like that yesterday, so I'd like to thank Kim over on Patreon. Rejoins from Tobias1, Neverplayer1, Ezra Bean, Annie Lucy, a join from Joshua Rich, and Koira with the upgrade. Thank you so much for your love, support, and time. And let's crack on with today's stories. You spicy so-and-sos. Much love to you. Now this first story comes from VX289. Am I the arsehole for telling entitled neighbor she can't park in my spot? Long story short, mum, stepdad, and I moved back from VA to TX. I have a brother that lived with us, but he chose to stay in VA with my aunt. Stepdad kept the apartment in VA and rented it out to someone. It did not work out, and so my brother decided he'd stay in stepdad's apartment. Months later, I moved back to VA from TX to stepdad's apartment as well. My brother isn't home much, so his parking spot is vacant most of the time. Now, we have this neighbor who lives in a house with a driveway that we've known for over 10 years. She's problematic in which she doesn't understand boundaries and limits. She's incredibly too comfortable, but that's because my mum is a pushover and doesn't know how to say no. Example, years ago, she asked my mum to drive her car. She'd come over unannounced, she'd rummage through things in the kitchen, list goes on. Now, we have two parking spots in a private parking lot which is reserved and paid for by us. My mum used to let neighbor park there free of charge as courtesy, but since my brother and I are back, it's changed. Tonight, she asked me if she can use the spot. I said no. I see her car is there anyway. I text and ask her why she's there, and she said, really? I said, yes, really. I left, come back, and her car is still there. I call her and tell her she needs to move. She proceeds to ask me why I need two parking spots. I tell her it's none of her business, etc. I'm arguing with her, and she hangs up. Little did I know, she called my stepdad to ask if she can park there. She is so entitled that she called my stepdad, who doesn't live there, to ask if she can use the spot after I already told her no. Are you kidding me? Oh, and apparently, I told her that she could park there. Side note, he and I don't get along. I'm sure he did this out of spite. I called a tow truck. Am I the asshole? Like it said in earlier in this post, this was all about setting boundaries. You was confident enough to go and set your boundary and said, no, you can't park there. She insisted on staying in that spot. Cheeky so-and-so. And then even when you confronted her through text about it, she, she responds with a shitty, really? <laughs> yes, really. Move your car or you'll get in towed. Oh, and I got a cheeky parking one for you from the other day, which I'll tell you after the comments. And we're going to start with Euphoric Abalon saying, Ouch, not the asshole, in my opinion, as she asked, and you were surrounded with a firm no, but still could have larger problems down the track, given the family connections. And she will likely decide to speak to your family over every minor perceived problem. Be prepared and keep in touch with Stepdad and Co. And if she decides to try her luck, going around you again. And Frequent Dependent says, Info, you've referred to this as Stepdad's apartment. Who's paying the rent? and or any associated fees for the parking spots in question. To which seriously, Effid Mai said, not the asshole, she asked you, you responded with a firm no and set the boundary. She then declined to move her car. And mini boss says, not the asshole, what the fuck is her problem? Tell her you'll call a toe on her if she continues her behavior. Do not call a toe on her without telling her first. And OP replies one more time saying, I already called the toe without mentioning it to her. This is the second time that she's done this. First time she did it by calling my brother. She also parked there without asking twice before. I'm so beyond done. And as I said, I have a little mini tale for you that happened the other day in central Oxford with my brother. I told you about him before. Um, he, we often get, well, when I used to live in central Oxford, there was always parking issues around there. Um, we used to live in right in central Oxford and there was, the parking is so expensive in Oxford. It's like 10 pound an hour or something ridiculous like that to park there. So a day shopping in Oxford cost you like, just too much in parking fees alone but where my brother lives and where i used to live there used to be like um garages that's separate from the houses and you know, people think they're entitled to just park outside the garages then walk into town because it's like a walking distance from there people used to just 
like park in front of like garages or wherever they could in front of people's houses on their driveways and then walk into town like god knows why people think they're entitled to do this but they just do and you see it happen all the time you see people going in and out of the area trying to scout for parking spaces so they don't have to pay these fees the fees are absolutely ridiculous but you're not entitled to park in front of people on people's driveways or garages or anything like that and as i mentioned in the story the other day you know my brother doesn't take no prisoners with that sort of shit he gets fed up with it he's called the police before police say they can't do nothing you try and call a like you know tow companies and stuff like that and they take an hour to get there by that time the car's disappeared and then he's left with a fee because they couldn't collect the vehicle and stuff like that and it's just a huge stress right so my brother just takes it into his own hands and um he works for like he works for a company that repairs plant vehicles and stuff like that like heavy diggers changes the tracks on the wheels and does all that kind of stuff if something's gone wrong with the vehicle he's the man to call kind of thing so he's got this big van he's got loads of tools and equipment so if anyone parked on his garage these days and they're there and they're there for too long and if he shouts he's he go outside his garage and he starts shouting whose car is this whose car is this like a madman no one responds and he'll tow the car away himself he'll make sure he doesn't damage it so he'll tie it up in a way you know it doesn't rip off the bumper or anything like that but he'll just literally tie it to the car drag it in the middle of the road so i was down there the other day and <laughs> it was around five or six i just finished work so i went down to visit my brother and his wife and kids and stuff like that and i was down there and he wasn't quite home yet but he phoned his wife while i was talking to her and said oh someone's in front of our garage so i walked around there and i can see my brother pacing behind this car just walking around in circles like oh, get, get stressed out like he usually does he went and knocked on all the houses around the garage to see if anyone owned it no one owned it so he starts doing his usual thing whose car is this whose car is this no response of course to which i see a man like stood quite far away 100 meters or so away hovering looking at the car and then disappearing and then coming back around the corner and you know it was definitely his car but he just didn't want to approach the situation and i kind of don't blame him either because if i saw that around my car i wouldn't be approaching that car either it's just not worth a car <laughs> but then to be fair i wouldn't park in front of someone else's garage either so my brother decides that's it car's getting moved off he goes to go and get his van so getting his van would take five minutes i was walking with him by the time he got back around the car is just pulling out and disappearing and my brother like a, a villain in a cartoon jumps out of his van and puts his hands in the air and goes no <laughs> yeah it's kind of an anti-climax that story isn't there really but uh, <laughs> i thought i had to tell you guys anyway you guys I, I i always gotta tell you guys about this sort of stuff i just can't keep it in but anyway enough of my waffle let's move on to the next story <laughs> And our next story comes from Emergency Soil 985. Am I the arsehole for refusing to help my daughter pay for college? Throw away accounts. I, 48 male, have three children with my ex. My son, Joe, 24 male, and two daughters, Jane, 21 female, and Amy, 19 female. After the children were born, my great-grandmother started a small education fund for each of them that I have now since controlled since her passing. There weren't any specific criteria for this fund within the context of the law or bank policy because of the type of fund my great-grandmother started. I've added my own money to the fund and my parents have occasionally put in some cash, but it was never expected. My ex never put a dime into it, but always wanted to have equal control of it and every time I refused, she would get upset. Over the years, she's tried to say that she needed the money from the fund for expenses for the kids, citing that the child support I was paying wasn't enough. I still refused and said that to just send me the bill and I'll pay for it directly. She didn't want that and would shut up after I asked how she could be so desperate for money for our kids, but refused to give any details. Fast forward to when Joe was going to college and I told my son to just give me enough information so that I can pay the school every semester and he'd be good. My ex tried to convince him to get me to give him all the money so that he could have his privacy. My son did consider it, but decided that he'd rather I just do this for him because he was worried of blowing through the money. I was proud of him. Jane, however, gave in to her mum's way of thinking and insisted that I just give her the entire fund during her second year. I tried to convince her that this way was best and pointed out how well this worked out for her brother. Jane just called me controlling and said that I didn't respect her enough to let her make her own choices. Eventually, I relented, but made it clear that this was all the money that there was for her college. That once it's gone, it's gone, and she was on her own if she needed more. Everything seemed fine up until about a few weeks ago, and Jane called crying, saying that she wasn't going to finish because she ran out of money. 
I asked her what happened and surprise surprise, Jave gave money to my ex. I let her vent and then told her that everything was going to be okay. That while she may not graduate by a certain time, she can still finish school. She'd just need to apply for grants, scholarships and loans, and maybe even take a year off to just work. How I would tell the school how she was on her own so she could get more money. Both Jane and my ex are upset with me because they expect me to pay for her schooling and that I was being horrible for wanting her to struggle with loans. To me, this isn't about being petty, but rather than giving Jane a hard lesson. She wanted to be treated like an adult. Well, finding your own way is what adults do. Joe agrees with me, but now Amy is being pressured to access her fund to help her sister. Technically, I could help, but I'd rather Jane work for it herself. Am I the asshole? ETA because I saw this question and wanted to clarify. One, each fund is separate and in each child's specific name. I had money in equally to all of them, but technically Joe ended up with a lesser amount because the funds were created at the same time for each child. So Jane and Amy's funds had more time to grow with interest. Two, also when each of my kids entered high school, I made them authorized users on one of my credit cards that I always paid fully on time to help build up their credit score so Jane can use that to her advantage. Three, by their senior year of high school, each of my children were told how much money they would have for college and that if there was any left over by the time they graduated, it was there to do with as they pleased. Four, Joe and Jane both went to in-state universities to save money, but Amy is considering going out of state, so she really is going to need every penny from the fund. She's even taken a year off before applying just to work so she can save more money. It's one of the reasons her mother and sister are using to justify Amy giving Jane some of her money. Five, we're American and living in the United States. Now, I personally think OP was, well, they did pay for the, the college fund to begin with. So, you know, the title itself is a bit misleading in some ways. But, you know, you was, you was honest and upfront with Jane about what would happen. You gave the example of the brother and, and how that money was used and how he didn't just waste it. And that could potentially happen to Jane because you was concerned about the ex. I don't know whether you relayed this information to Jane to begin with. You probably didn't because you sound like a very reasonable person and don't want to get in between things between like a mother and daughter. In some ways, I do feel sorry for Jane if she's been, because it sounds like it sounds like there may be some manipulation going on with the money from the, the mother towards the daughter, getting that money somehow. So I do feel sorry for her in some ways, but I think this is gonna be chalked down to a lesson learned from Jane. Although it doesn't sound like she's learning the lesson just yet because they are both upset with you because they expect you to pay for schooling, even though you already have and was being horrible for wanting to struggle with loans. I mean, what is the mum paying towards in this? And she even went as far as to call you controlling in the situations. Uh, you did, I think you was right all the way through this post and it's a lesson learned for Jane. And hopefully Amy picks up on this too for her future fund when it comes to fruition and learns from the mistakes made here. But Sint Elvis says, not the arsehole, and you are doing yourself a major disservice with this post title. You did help pay for your daughter to go to college. And Nom Nom 83 was taken, says, not the arsehole, and quotes, both Jane and my ex are upset with me because they expect me to pay for her schooling. And then says, you did. Jane is 21, and why she's crying and guilt tripping you about this while her mother coaches her, instead of turning around and saying, mum, I need that money back, speaks volumes about how manipulative your ex is. If there's any way you can directly pay the school for Amy's costs instead of allowing her access, I recommend you do so. You can help protect her from her mother. And Chai Person says, not the arsehole. You made it perfectly clear that the fund was a limited resource, not an open credit card tab. In a second year of college, your daughter is old enough to understand the importance of being debt free during and post year college. If she still chose to give the money to her mother, that's between her and her mother. I won't say that makes her an arsehole, but it doesn't make it your responsibility. If I were you, I won't turn a deaf ear to this, but I'd be careful about Amy being under pressure to pay her sister's fees. She might not be in a position to truly understand the entire situation. Talk to her, explain the situation. She might still insist on paying for her sister's college. Encourage her to do financial research or talk to a financial counselor. After that, it's out of your hands. Now we're gonna move on to the next story. Now this one comes from a random string of numbers called, am I the arsehole for telling my girlfriend I don't like her wearing a fake wedding ring? I wanna start by saying I love this woman with every fiber of my being and she's truly the one thing in my stupid life I got right. Story, my girlfriend has a wedding ring that was given to her by her still living mother over 15 years ago. She wears it on her ring finger and has done so long before we were together. 
She claimed she did this so that creeps wouldn't hit on her. Lucky for me, I'm hopelessly unobservant. I totally get that this is a thing and completely understand why some women do this. The issue started when we officially became a couple and she continued to wear it. I didn't think anything of it until one of our co-workers we worked together pointed at the ring and asked when I had proposed. After that awkward encounter, I expected her to either stop wearing it or switch fingers, but she didn't. After a few more of these interactions, I asked her why she insisted on wearing it, knowing she was going to have to keep explaining it. She still claimed that it was to keep creeps away. I, as gently as I could, suggested that the creeps she keeps trying to keep away probably won't notice slash care if she's married and that I'm a much more effective deterrent anyways. Flexes imaginary muscles. Don't know why I just did that as well. To which she simply shrugged and said, maybe. We've been together two years and in that time, I've come to the conclusion that the ring isn't so much about keeping away creeps as it is her fantasizing about being married. She likes people to see the ring and assume she's married even if she or I occasionally have to explain otherwise. I've kept this theory to myself, by the way. We talk openly about marriage and she doesn't hide that she's always fantasized about it, which is how I've come to this conclusion. Well, today I was admittedly in a bit of a grumpy mood. And when she mentioned she had been looking at the wedding rings again, I snarked, what's wrong with the one you're already wearing? Fully arsehole here, I know. To which she got a little defensive and hurt. I apologize, but reiterated that it still kind of bothers me that even after all this time that I wish she wouldn't wear it. I guess I'm realizing what really bothers me isn't so much the embarrassment slash awkwardness of having to explain the ring, but I feel like it diminishes the special feeling of me getting her an actual engagement ring, which I plan on doing soon. All that to say, am I the asshole for asking her not to wear it? Edit, minor clarification, her mother never wore the ring. It was just given to her by her mother and its value is purely sentimental to my girlfriend. And then it says, also, holy shit, I'm getting roasted and apparently I deserve it. Guess I never considered it an insecurity issue as so many are suggesting. So I guess I have some soul searching to do. Thanks for the input guys. And I guess you can know where the comments are gonna go right here. So we jump straight onto the comments with this one with Golden Nebula saying, you're the asshole, it's a ring and you're reading way too much into it. I wore my high school ring on that special hand and finger for years. It's not that big of a deal. And Crafty Koshka says, you're the asshole in quotes. She still claimed that was to keep creeps away. I, as gently as I could, suggested that the creeps she's trying to keep away probably won't notice slash care if she's married and I'm that more effective etc. So the above paragraph tells me that perhaps your girlfriend wears the ring in order to have some kind of control over her body and her perception towards other people. However, you're for some reason bothered by this. You want to be the one with some control here, which you admit to when you say you want to be the deterrent. This is such an insignificant thing. Why can't you let her have this? She explains she isn't married when people ask about it, so no, it couldn't be that she fantasizes about being married. And Forward Squirrel says, you're the arsehole, you need to stop obsessing over this. You're acting like that creepy little dude from Lord of the Rings. It's just a piece of jewelry. I guarantee that once you propose and give your girlfriend an engagement ring, that the ring will be the one she wears and will mean a whole lot more to her than the one she is wearing now. And one more from Corona Funtime saying, you're the arsehole, stop freaking out over jewelry. And this, and quotes the section about the imaginary muscles and the deterrence and stuff. Do you know how annoying as a woman it is to try and deflect guys by going, I have a boyfriend, like we are property. The ring will hopefully get some guys to leave her alone. And for those it doesn't, she can tell to buzz off. But you want her to deflect guys by saying, she's yours. No, stop that now. This is not about your ego. You have insecurities to work on. And now let's move on to the final story. And this story is from Help With This. Am I the arsehole for refusing to go to my brother's wedding if my son can't go? Some backstory, my brother's 30 male, soon to be wife Tara, 26 female, went to the same high school as me. She was one grade below me, but we all knew each other. I, 27 male, have a five-year-old son with an ex-girlfriend who also went to school with us. My ex and my brother's girlfriend hated each other. They were on the same drill team and I don't know, were jealous of each other. It was just some old BS petty high school rivalry. Then I guess it got bad because they were both crushing on the same guy and he got with my ex after he rejected Tara. I got with my ex in college. It was a brief thing. We broke up right before my son Jason was born. He's with me full time and my ex is in the picture sometimes, but not that much. I found out over a year ago, my brother was in a relationship with Tara and now they're engaged and gonna get married in November. 
haven't been around Tara much because I'm busy with my own life. When invitations went out, my brother called me. He said Tara didn't like Jason being there at their wedding. They've never met before because he's the son of my ex. She just doesn't like the idea of her sworn enemy's son being at her wedding. I didn't think he was serious because that was all years ago and we're, you know, adults now. My ex isn't even in our lives, so it's not like she'll be there. I got kind of mad at my brother that he'd be cool with his own nephew not being at his wedding. All my other siblings are bringing their kids. My brother pleaded me to go along with this because he wants her to be happy on their special day. So I said, you know what, fine. But if my son isn't allowed at the wedding, then I won't be going either. Now, my brother's the one mad at me for turning this into a big deal because he wants his family there. But he's just caught between a rock and a hard place. My parents agree she's being ridiculous and are berating my brother. My other siblings think I should have just agreed and not turned this whole thing into a bigger drama. So I'm on the fence about it now, how I handled things here. If it was no kid's wedding, then I'd get that. And yeah, it's their special day but my son is the only one not allowed to be there and I don't feel right with excluding him over something childish that was 10 years ago. Am I the arsehole? Ah, it's one of those ones that involves children and I think it's just pathetic to be quite honest. The Future Bright is being absolutely pathetic in this situation, blaming a child for something that happened years ago and a totally innocent party for something that happened years ago. This whole sworn enemy shit going on and the brother is like no better either for not standing up and saying no i want my nephew to be there and and people around them saying oh no no you should just just go along with it absolutely not what is the future what's going to be happening in the future with this child does the brother plan on not seeing nephew ever again because the wife doesn't like them they can't go around their house oh man it makes me sick there's a line in there where the brother says he wants his family to be there and sort of blaming you for not going along yet the nephew is family what is he playing at but I just keep coming back. What's going to happen with future scenarios? Like, say they have a barbecue or a party, a birthday party or something like that, and the kid turns up. What's she going to do? She's holding a grudge against a child, and the brother is enabling it. Come on now. And so are family members as well. Oh, wow. You're definitely not the arsehole in this situation. If I was in your position, I would, yeah, I'd be questioning as well. Massive questions would be going on. But Cynthia, Sophia says, not the arsehole. If it was no kids event, then I would say no biggie. But since kids are allowed, the bride is being the arsehole. It's not your son's fault that the bride has something against his mother. Good on you for standing up for your son. I know this might be a slippery slope fallacy, but if you allow it for the wedding, what else is going to exclude your son from? Just doesn't make sense on her end. And Icy Air says, not the arsehole, ask him what the long-term plan is. Is he plan on cutting his nephew out of his life forever due to his fiance wife's childhood feud with a child's practically non-existent mother? Does this mean she will make him or expect you to miss family events, Christmas, birthdays, etc. if your child is there? Where are the boundaries that she expects around your son? Because believe me, not attending the wedding is just the first step. Your brother needs to think long and hard about the situation and what it will really mean for his future relationships with his family. And Philip Regular says and quotes, Now my brother's the one mad at me for turning this into a big deal because he wants his family there. And then says, reread that. He wants his family there, but he doesn't want your son there because Tara will be upset. So your son is not part of the family. Also, if you let this slide this one time, what about next time? What about all family gatherings and holidays? What if their defense is, this is her big day, so it's only going to happen once? Can anyone absolutely guarantee that? What if Tara starts threatening your brother and say, she won't go because Jason is there? What if they have kids and Tara is holding back the kids because Jason is there? Can anyone be sure that will not and will never happen again? If Tara is treating a five-year-old child like that, she's not going to get better. Stand up for your child. And Rune Dude says, your brother is gonna regret this marriage. What kind of adult holds a grudge against a child for something they weren't alive for that one of their parents did? I highly suggest you meet with them, both families included, and have a frank discussion. And Sev's mama says, not the arsehole. It starts with a wedding and then what? You and your brother start trading off on who shows up to family gatherings because this immature little girl wants to punish an actual child for some petty high school drama that happened years ago. Did your brother really expect you to be okay with this? If he wants to commit his life to being miserable with bitter Betty, <laughs> that's his business, but you don't need to buy into. Keep protecting your child. 
And we'll have one more from Howard Project saying, not the arsehole, your brother needs an intervention or something. He's marrying someone who hates and intends to visibly exclude his own five-year-old nephew from his life. Is he for real? Now, what do you guys make of today's stories? What are your verdicts? Let me know in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for spending 20 minutes or so of your time with me today. Listen to a story or two. It means the absolute world. If you haven't yet, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, to be notified every single day. We post usually twice a day and YouTube doesn't always notify everyone for some weird reason. So please keep an eye out for that. And if you want to support the channel further, you absolutely can, but never any pressure to do so just by clicking that join button down below for YouTube or clicking the link in the description for Patreon and joining up there. Once again, thank you so much for your love, support and time. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. <laughs> Much love. Bye.